When we have a composition of functions, that means we have functions inside functions. Another way of writing this is something called f of g of x. You can write this another way. You can write it as f of g of x. And all this means is you take the g function and you put it inside the f function. With a number, we need to evaluate the inside and put the answer in the inside of the outside function. This sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. With a variable, put the inside in for the variable in the outside. So don't evaluate it at a given number since we are given a variable to substitute in. So, we take f of x and g of x and we're asked to put g of 7 in for f of 7. So another way of thinking about this is f of g of 7. Since it's a number we're supposed to be using, to evaluate, we will write this as g of 7 and find that first. g of 7 is 7 plus 3 or 10. Since we know that g of 7 is equal to 10, we can now rewrite this as f of 10. If we want to evaluate f of 10, we simply put 10 in to the function square root of x plus 6 in for 6, or sorry, in for x. So now we have f of 10 is equal to the square root of 16 or f of 10 is equal to 4. If we did the opposite where it's g of f of 7, we would have to evaluate f of 7 first. This would give us the square root of 7 plus 6, which would be the square root of 13. Now that we know what f of 7 is, we can write it as g of the square root of 13, which is the square root of 13 plus 3. Since I can't simplify that further, that's the answer. In example 2, we have p of x is equal to x squared plus 2x and r of x is equal to x plus 3. We want p of r of x. So first we need to find r of x. 
We know that to be x plus 3. So now we've got p of x plus 3. Now we can write p of x plus 3 as x squared plus 2 times x, where x is now x plus 3. So p of x plus 3 is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 9 plus 2x plus 6 when I distribute the 2 and when I FOIL the x plus 3. So p of x plus 3 is equal to combining like terms x squared plus 8x plus 15. In this second part, we do the opposite. We find r of p of n. This means we need to find p of n first. And this shouldn't be an n, this should be a p, or sorry, an x. There we go. So p of x is equal to x squared plus 2x. So we can rewrite this as r of x squared plus 2x. Now we can evaluate r of x squared plus 2x. We know that r of x is x plus 3. So now I'll plug this in for x. So r of p of x is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 3.